more than 20 years of pro football. George Blanda is one. Earl Marl is the other. George Blanda is in the Hall of Fame. Chances are Earl Marl never will be. He played 21 years with six different teams. It seems that every time two owners got together with a fountain pen, Earl Marl was either being sold or bought or waived or traded. He was a man who saw his career in ashes at the age of 37 only to rise from the rubble and help lead his team to the greatest season in pro football history. Here's the story of a long neglected but authentic hero, Earl Marl, the NFL's greatest relief pitcher. Earl Marl's first 12 years in professional football read like a travelogue of the United States. From San Francisco to Pittsburgh, to Detroit, to New York, there were many years, many teams, many numbers. Those early years were filled with utility. His finest moments came with the Lions, but injuries hobbled him in 1964, and he was traded to the Giants. I was a little bit bitter because uh, this was my longest stay. I was there seven years and felt that I had contributed. And, and I guess at that time I was starting to uh, doubt myself, as you say, uh, gee, is this the end of the road? Is my career ending? Morrow found new life in New York. But his resourcefulness could not revive a crumbling giant team. And he crumbled with them. A broken arm made Morrow a spectator. And at season's end, he was released. In the apparent twilight of a lackluster career, Earl signed with Baltimore as a backup to a legend, Johnny Unitas. Earl Morrill had uh, kicked around with a lot of teams. He had an outstanding college career at Michigan State, but uh, really never settled down and made it as a pro. But I brought him in and found out that he was a very intelligent player and a money player, a guy that had the poise to make the play when you had to make the play. When a preseason injury sidelined Unitas, Earl Morrill became a sudden starter on opening day, 1968. He hadn't been in our camp but a week. He didn't know a play, he didn't know a formation, he didn't know a pass route. So Earl gets in the huddle and he says, okay, everybody relax now, calm down. Somebody said, call a play, will you? Well, he couldn't think of a play. He'd say, out left, flank right, um, and then let's see now. He said, Earl, you gotta call the play. Well, somehow he got it out, and somehow we won that game, and then we won 15 out of the next 17 with Earl Morrill. He just got it done somehow. Total relaxation, and uh, she never did learn the system. We're going this way. Yeah. You're on the left. Okay. 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 You're on the left. But Earl's calculated cool calmed the Colts and helped bring an NFL championship to Baltimore. And Morrow, a four-time cast-off, was named the league's player of the year. And I'm just happy to be here, really. Uh, 13 years, uh, you know, 13 is supposed to be unlucky, but this is the luckiest for me, I can say that. Morrow's memorable season was soon obscured by his failure to win Super Bowl III when the New York Jets intercepted three of his passes. On that January afternoon in Miami, Morrow was best remembered for the play that lives in infamy. Instead of looking at Jimmy Orr, who's standing wide open in the end zone, uh, waving his hands, and I see the fullback and try to steer it to him, and it gets intercepted there. It's one of those things that I guess it just wasn't in the books for. We were heavily favored and couldn't believe that it did happen. It's just unbelievable. And you think about your career as, uh, tell you, I'm on top of the world, and all of a sudden, bang, I'm at the bottom. And I think that's one of the things the Super Bowls do to you, that you have a great season. If you don't win that Super Bowl, uh, it seemed like the whole season just went down the drain. Two years later, Earl Morrill regained his self-esteem in Super Bowl V. Again, he relieved Johnny Unitas. But this time, he led the Colts to a come-from-behind win over the Dallas Cowboys. After 17 years with five teams, Earl had his world championship. But his highest moment in a marathon career faded fast. Later that year, at the age of 37, he was cut by the Colts. Then, Don Shula called again, this time from Miami. I called Coach Shula back uh, in my mind thinking I wasn't going to go. But I guess it's one of those things, his little knack that he has, and he gives you that little zinger. He says, 
I can't assure you a spot on the team. You still have to come down and make the team. You still have to prove yourself. And I guess it's that little challenge that he threw out there that said, okay, I'm, I'm coming. I'll, I'll be there. Nice shot, Earl. Mid-season, Earl. Okay, babe. He was one of the guys, and he just, just loved to be a part of the Dolphins, and we loved having him as our, our quarterback and as our teammate. Well, well, he took a lot of kidding, and he was a little bit older, and we used to uh, put a rocking chair in front of his locker. He was just a, a great guy. Everybody loved Earl Moore. There is not a nicer guy that I know of. Indeed, if there is a fountain of youth in Florida, Earl Morrow found it in Miami, but only because he never stopped looking. You never know when you're going to be called upon. You never know if you're going to get a chance that week or that year. But yet you have to go out and practice just as hard. And when you are thrust into the fray, you have to uh, come through because it's a crucial situation. When Bob Greasy went down with a broken ankle, Earl Morrow was called upon again to save a season. He did more than save it. He kept the Dolphins rolling through an undefeated regular season and two playoff wins. But for the Super Bowl, Don Shula chose to start a healthy Bob Greasy and benched Earl Morrow. The guy really deserved to, uh, to start the Super Bowl because of what he had contributed to our team. And it would have been a glorious ending for a tremendous season for this man. But I still felt that the best thing for our team at that time was to start Bob Greasy just based on what I felt was best for the football team. But it probably was the toughest decision that I've ever had to make. The Dolphins won the Super Bowl, but the bitter irony was that the man who led them to the summit was left on the sidelines. I'm sure it was a disappointment to Earl, but on the other hand, uh, he's such a gracious guy and such a team guy that this did not at all affect the team, and I don't think any other quarterback could handle it as well as Earl did. A moral to the story, uh, through all setbacks, you still have to believe in yourself, believe that you can go out and perform and do the job as well as anybody else. And, I feel that uh, I have done that and proved that. After 21 years with six teams, pro football's greatest relief pitcher picked up his final option and retired at the age of 40.